Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. Welcome to morning prayer for August the 3rd, 2022. Uh, it's a great day because we're going to read readings from Luke 24 and John 20 that are typically only read on Easter Sunday. But we're doing that because today is a special feast for the three ladies that are called the myrrh bearers. Those three women, Joanna, Mary, and Salome, who brought spices to the tomb of Jesus and who were the very first to see him alive again as he was resurrected. We'll talk about what that means, um, well, in, as how God regards his creation and also in the church in a special writing from Martin Chemnitz about these women who were first to see Jesus alive. So let's begin all of that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And first, some words from Psalm 68. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. That last phrase about the rebellious dwelling in a parched land, it makes me think about those who do not know Christ as Lord and Savior and the equivalent of a parched land in which they live. You know, Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well that he was living water and those who drank of his living water would never thirst again. That's our reality, that's our truth because of Christ. And so the opposite is also true for people who don't know Christ. We need to be the ones who bring the water, the living water to those who don't yet know him. So we can, by God's grace, bring them out of the parched land and into the land that we live in, the land where we will never be thirsty again, right? Okay, so Luke 24, followed by a section of John 20. I want to combine those two narratives together as we talk about those three women, Mary, Joanna, and Salome. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found out the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told the, the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying there by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Okay, now, continuing on in John chapter 20. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Women. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I, ascend, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. What a scene. You know, a scene that I think those of us who have been in the church for our lives, have heard the story so many times, but when you really think about it, really walk through that story, wow, how absolutely awesome. And who gets to see him first? But these humble servant women 
who accompanied Jesus on his ministry, who served him, served the disciples, who were there at the cross, and now here at the empty tomb as well. And and um, uh, uh, so um, Martin Chemnitz, often called the other Martin of the Reformation, he wrote a little bit about why he thinks the women were the very first to see Jesus alive again. He says there are several answers. First, God was keeping his ancient custom of choosing what is foolish, undistinguished, and despised in the eyes of the world in order to put the strong and lofty to shame. These women were despised not only due to their gender, but also because of Galilee, their homeland. But God exalts them by revealing to them the resurrection of his son, which is an excellent article of our faith. Indeed, he even sends them to the apostles to share the message of Christ's resurrection with them, so that they become, as the ancients say, apostles to the apostles. Another way that God chose to do this is he wanted to prevent the accusations of the Jews. The high priests lied, saying that Christ's disciples had stolen the body of their master. In order to, in order to prove the shamelessness and absurdity of this lie, it happened by God's marvelous providence that these women came to the grave before the apostles. Now, it is highly unlikely that those few women could have stolen the body from a grave guarded by soldiers and closed by a large stone. Also, through the, women, through the woman Eve, death came to all human beings. On account of this, Christ wanted his resurrection, which brings us righteousness and life, to be told to others by women. At the fall of the first human being, those three worked together, the devil, who deceived the woman who proclaimed his talk further, the man who ate and corrupted human nature. So also at Christ's resurrection, these three worked together, Christ who rose and redeemed human nature, the angel who proclaimed the resurrection, and the women who carried the joyful message further. Now, if Christ was pleased with the zeal of these women, which was not yet bound together with significant weaknesses of faith, and did not let them come away from the tomb empty, how much less will he let those go away empty who in true faith seek him who rules at the right hand of his father? From Martin Chemnitz. And then a very brief description uh, of why we have this feast today for Joanna, Mary, and Salome, the myrrh bearers. They are known in some traditions as the faithful women. The visit of these three persons and other women into the tomb of Jesus on the first Easter morning is noted in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark and Luke. Joanna was the wife of Chusa, a steward in Herod's household. Mary, the mother of James, who is the son of Alphaeus, was another of the women who faithfully provided care for Jesus and his disciples from the time of his Galilean ministry through his burial after the crucifixion. Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, joined with the women both at the cross and in bringing the spices to the garden tomb. These faithful women have been honored in the church through the centuries as examples of humble and devoted service to the Lord. So today we thank God for Salome and Joanna and Mary, the myrrh bearers. Let's pray. Mighty God, your crucified and buried son did not remain in the tomb for long. Give us joy in the tasks set before us that we might carry out faithful acts of service as did Joanna, Mary, and Salome offering to you the sweet perfume of our grateful hearts, so that we, too, may see the glory of your resurrection and proclaim the good news with unrestrained eagerness and fervor, working in us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. And as the prayer states, I hope and pray for all of us that we, as it says here, move out into that world, that parched land where the unbelievers live with unrestrained eagerness and fervor to bring them the living water of Jesus Christ. Have a glorious day in the Lord.